So I hello. This is Alan, the Forex Algo Trader again. And in today's video, we are going to look at the MQL5 compilation errors and warnings. So uh, maybe to get started, I will go straight ahead and open Meta Editor, which will, you can do by that one by clicking on this little IDE icon over there, which will initialize Meta Editor for you. So basically, even before we get actually started, in this lesson, we will learn about the errors that we can find when creating, executing, and running MQL5 programs. That now can be expert advisors, uh, something like uh, indicators, includes, libraries, scripts, and yeah, basically the MQL5 programs in that case. So what makes this uh, very lesson very important to understand is that in, in the MQL5 is that we report these errors when you present it not correctly. But if we do not know what these errors mean or, uh, or uh, maybe at a stage which the program that you are creating in this case in case these errors now are presented, you will now probably take more time to resolve or to handle these errors more than you already know what they mean. So when you, when you know what these MQL5 errors mean, you will take less time compared to when you do not know what these means. That is basically what you know. So maybe to get started quickly, you can just click on the experts folder. Let, let us just expand it, go to the algo trading folder. Then from there, we can uh, maybe go to where? Maybe I can just click it, include our file on the MQL5 language B6, since this is now something to base on the just errors and warning. We do not really create a, an expert advisor. So just click on new, then from there, next advisor, just anything. Then from there, we can just name it MQL5. Maybe compilation errors and uh, warning. So something like that one, I wish to have a space in there. Then click on next, next, and then finish something super easy like that one. So right from here, we can maybe start by saying that uh, that uh, there are basically three main types of errors in the that you were that you can encounter on the MQL5 programming when you are either creating, executing or running the MQL5 programs. So this type of errors, the errors can be so types of errors that you can encounter are uh, maybe one there are now the compilation errors and warnings so then we have the second one in this case now can be the runtime uh, errors something like that one then from there you can now have the other type of error that you can get is now the trade trade server errors. So in this lesson, we are just going to pay attention to, to the compilation. So we will have now the compilation errors and warnings, which are basically warnings, compilation errors and warnings. That is what our subtopic will be for today maybe we can do the runtime errors and the trade server errors on the basically maybe some other time but the main cause for this lesson is the compilation errors and warnings in mql5 so you can just have maybe something like uh, mql5 compilation errors and warnings so when you maybe when you write your code for a specific program you may make a mistake and that is just completely very normal by writing a wrong syntax or having typos, for for example, in that case now, which which these sellers now can lead to can occur maybe when compiling the code, something like that one. So today, that is what we are going to to look at. That is not the most and the popular and the commonly faced types of these errors. So it it is. Maybe the most important thing also that you need to know is that the program cannot be compiled until the errors are 
eliminated or resolved something like that one so you have to be careful on that one that is why we need to remove the errors completely to handle or to resolve the errors in this case so let us just get started then so the first kind of error maybe you can start with the errors so you can start with mql5 m maybe another one mql5 compilation errors then we'll go to the warnings in that uh, manner so the first kind of error that you get is now the uh, semicolon semi maybe i can have it something like in a small caps semicolon expected expected kind of error so semicolon expected error something which is now like that one so this error will be encountered when you forget to write a semicolon at the end of an operator or a, an expression in that case so an example is a, maybe something like this one maybe you can define a, a variable like let's say integer integer just a random one a is equals to three something like that one so you forget to write the semicolon so usually if you were to compile this one right away you get uh, okay so we cannot do that one at that point so we, this is what we will be doing i will just have to let me just comment this one out yeah comment that one out then from there now we can have something like integer three something like that one so if we compile this one we get too many errors we do not get, want to have the many errors wow Why do we get too many errors? Okay, so let me just do this one on the on in it. So integer a is equals to three, something like that one. Then we can now compile. So right now, instead of doing it, let us just not do this one on the global scope. So let us now go to the on init. So maybe to push our code a little higher, I will just do away with, the, with all of these comments since we do not need them right now. So that our code looks more compilable, more sexier in that case. So from here now, yeah, exactly what I did really want. So if we forget the error and we compile, we get the semicolon expected error in this case. So to take care of that one, we just have to maybe put, uh, maybe can have a is equals to one. Then if we compile, we get the semicolon expected error. So from there, we can have something like a semicolon to take care of that kind of error in this case. Maybe uh, you can also encounter this kind of error when you forget to when you forget uh, what kind I'm trying to remember the left the left uh, parentheses in this case so the the left bracket in this case so we can have something like is equals to one plus two so if you have we were to put this one in a bracket like that one and then forget the let me have it in this way you do not have the left uh, bracket you can see that uh, we we get we are supposed to get that kind of error in this case <laughs> yeah in, in this case do we have it semicolon expected error yeah you can see we also have that kind of uh, error right now if you forget to put that semicolon so you can see we also if even if we add the semicolon <coughs> 
Even if we add the semicolon over there, it is telling us that semicolon is expected again in this case. So to take care, take, to take care of that error, we just need to put in the left uh, parenthesis in this case. So if you compile, it will not compile fine in that case. So that is not the first kind of error that we get. The second kind of error in this case now number two, it is the unexpected token kind of error that we may, maybe you have already seen this error. So this error is encountered when you forget the right parenthesis or bracket in this case or that is. So of course if we come over here again and then remove the right parenthesis, if we were not to compile, we get an, an what did we say our error was again? We get an unexpected token error in this case as you can see over here which is now presented on the on the i mean on the on the errors toolbox tab in this case so to go to that to that error you just need to right click on that error and the cursor will be taken to right where we want your error to be so maybe our cursor was somewhere like there then we right click on the cursor the right away the cursor will be taken back to the pre, the place where the error is so right there we put in the left the right parenthesis in this case to take care of that error so if we were to compile now the error is gone again so that is not the second now to go to the that kind of error that you may encounter is a, or even before you go to the third type of error that you may encounter in this case, you can have a, something like a, to get the un, unexpected token error, you can also get that kind of error when you add an extra left parenthesis in the present line of code. So maybe you can come over here and, and uh, put uh, in uh, just for illustration purposes can put the left parenthesis again in this case so if you are to compile you can see an, an unexpected token no it doesn't matter where this uh, kind of kind of uh, maybe you can put it again yeah just uh, like a uh, repetition you can see an unexpected token error something like that one so we get those that kind of warning. So that is uh, all in this. Uh, yeah. So you can just compile it now. Takes care of that error. So the that kind of error now. It is the un undeclared identifier identifier error in this case. So undeclared identifier error is now the, the our third type kind of error that you may encounter when compiling your MQL5 programs or running them. So this type of error or, or this kind of error occurs when you use a variable without declaring it first. As we must declare it, as we must now declare the any new variable before using it or assigning it to, assigning it any value in this case or any data value in this case so maybe to to do maybe an example on that one can just come again to something like uh, the same our own init function then say like we want to initialize b yeah let's let us just say b so if we compile this one you can see that we get undeclared identifier we get undeclared identifier the reason as to why you get this kind of error is because we have not yet declared our our variable our variable in here our b variable in here in this case so you can just declare it by maybe double or you can just have it as integer then something like that one so when we compile that error now should be gone however we get another warning so we'll just hang on we'll just come to correct the, to such kind of warnings in uh, a later part of this uh, lesson in that case so we can see we just maybe even to take care of the warning we can just you now initialize it to is equals to one so now the warning will be gone but maybe hang on we'll just get to know why we get that kind of error so again if you were to initialize to state a variable and not uh, declare it maybe b is equals to one 
and it is not declared in any where part of the code, we, get, we still get that there is an undeclared identifier. So either way, we have to declare it maybe in a, some some case like a, like a maybe also maybe it can also be somewhere here int integer b something like that one. You declare it now so you can use it in an expression or an operation something like uh, that one. So if you are to compile that kind of error now is gone. So let us now move on to the third now to the now fourth type of error that you may encounter. So the fourth type of error is now unbalanced, unbalanced uh, left parentheses, parentheses, I hope that is the correct wording. The unbalanced left parentheses error. It is the other kind of error, common and popular error that you can encounter in uh, MQL5 compilation process, something like that one. So this type of error occurs when we miss the, the right parentheses in this case. So unbalanced left parentheses occurs when you get, when you miss the right parentheses in this case. So let, let us just uh, maybe take care of, uh, of that one. We can maybe come to maybe what, maybe, maybe what, maybe a function like this one. And then miss the right parentheses. What is uh, this one telling us? I actually do not want to use, uh, to use, uh, I want to just get read. Do, where do we have that kind of one? It is not being presented. So I'll just go ahead and create another kind of uh, expression. So we can have something more dynamic also like bool, boolean like a is equals to 7. Then you can have that uh, if a, did we declare a? Yeah. Okay. So we can now have c. Let us just use c again here. Yeah. If c now is equals to something, is equals to something like uh, maybe, maybe uh, something not correct, <laughs> something like that one. Then we want to have a, a what kind? We can now initialize that C is equals to uh, one, something like that one. So let us now try to compile and see if we get that warning. So let us now miss that uh, that uh, that right parenthesis. So you can see when we miss the right parenthesis, we can we have this uh, kind of error, unbalanced left parenthesis. When you miss the right the right parenthesis, you get unbalanced left parenthesis kind of error, which is now exactly here. So if you right click on it, it takes you to the line of code where you have the problem. So now to balance this, uh, to balance this uh, right, left parenthesis, you have to take care, to you have to input or unmiss the right parenthesis. So right now it works fine. So that is all uh, in that section. Or even maybe the other uh, in other kind of situation that you get this kind of error that is not the unbalanced left parenthesis it is when you use an extra right parenthesis. So if you were to again to come here and have another maybe right uh, parenthesis, an extra right parenthesis. This is uh, unexpected. When you usually use another right parenthesis, maybe not in this kind of uh, expression, you also get that kind of error, unbalanced left parenthesis, something like that one. So in this case, you also as well know what to how to take care of that error. So however, when you use uh, an extra right parenthesis, you get unbalanced left parenthesis in that uh, situation. Yeah, or was it is it something like this one? And balanced left parenthesis. Yeah, that is exactly what I, I I meant. So when you use an extra parenthesis, an extra left parenthesis, in this case, you get unbalanced left parenthesis, something like that one. So 
basically that is what uh, we mean by that one so if we were to compile it it compiles fine again so right now we can move on so we can move on to the fifth kind of error now in this case which is now the un unexpected end of program error and expected end of program error something like uh, like that one so this happens usually when you you when you miss uh, or forget to include a closing bracket or now the closing curly bracket in this case so in this case even before uh, we get too far from here we have different kinds of brackets in this case so in uh, mql5 programming so we have basically you even know them we have that kind of bracket which is now referred to as parentheses parentheses or a round bracket i am doing this one because we are now going to interchangeably use these terms so we have that kind of a bracket also which is now referred to as square square or box bracket or box uh, bracket then from there we have this kind of uh, the curly brackets which is now we usually call them braces or now you can also call them the curly brackets then from there we have this kind of uh, brackets also in this case where we call them the angle uh, the brackets or I think which which word do you use is the chevrons. The we can also call them the chev chevrons. I, I don't know which kind of English is that one. Either is uh, England or USA. I'm not very sure about that one. However, that is not the four kinds of brackets that we use in coding in this case. So for us now to be able to proceed from the un unexpected end of program error. This is no this no kind of error results from the use of uh, when you basically miss to use or forget to include the closing bracket that is no the closing curly brackets or the closing brace in this case so somewhere like that one we can just go on to this function and this is not the what we are referring to as this uh, closing brace in this case so if we were to miss that one in such a case and then compile our program you know you can see an unexpected end of program in that case an unexpected end of program basically that is an example of where that kind of error results from in that case so you can see if and the, the kind of error that we are referring to now in this case so from there we can now move on to the sixth uh, a kind of error which is now expressions are not allowed on a global scope so expressions are not allowed on a global scope kind of error in this case so this type of error or this kind of error occurs when we miss the left bracket or the left curly or brace in a compound operator that is now the the uh, hey what do do i call it basically <laughs> basically it is this kind of uh, kind of bracket this kind of curly opening curly bracket or opening brace so if you miss that one if you were to eliminate that one you can see now that expressions this kind of error expressions are not allowed on a global scope that is now basically now what we 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 have in that case or in another case or uh, i just want to undo yeah then let me compile it compiles fine yeah or this kind of error may also happen when you write a statement or expression outside the the scope of a specific function as we have to to uh, use only expressions within the scope of that specific function in this case so if uh, maybe like 
an example an example maybe maybe you can have this kind of uh, expression over there where we have that kind of uh, curly bracket curly bracket then i can have it as a tab so if we were to do that one that is now a complete kind of a specific function within that uh, that uh, on init function so if we were to take this one outside this function let me just let me just copy or uh, should I copy or paste? Let me just cut. I would just undo. Let me just cut from there. You can see if I were to compile it, compiles fine. Then let me just take it outside on a global scope. Or maybe I can even maybe have it here. Something like that one. Then I compile. You can see now uh, expressions are not allowed on a global scope. Just as a, the anticipated kind of error that we outlined uh, somewhere here yeah, expressions are not allowed on a global scope so we get the same warning the reason as to why we get this one is because we cannot take an expression or a statement or write it on a on a global scope in this case we just have to write it inside another specific or predefined function in this case so that is not the i'll just undo Okay, I hope I have done enough. So from there, we can now move on to the other kind of uh, error that we anticipate in this case. So from there, we can now move on to the seventh kind of error, which is now the wrong parameters count. Wrong parameters count kind of error in this case. Basically, maybe if you have done some uh, some uh, compilation or some just coding on the MQL5, you have encountered this error whenever you are doing something, uh, something maybe something on it, something like that one. You may have encountered this one. Maybe that is now as a an addition so we get this error when you use when we basically use a specific function with specific parameters that we we do not specify these parameters properly by specifying either too many or not too or not enough parameters in this case so either we do not have the exact number of parameters that we have to that specific function in this case so maybe something like a uh, like uh, which as the, like this on the init function as this kind of parameters inside it that is what now we refer to as the parameters so if we do not have these parameters completely something like that one then we try to compile you can see we get a warning that the function declared with wrong parameters or wrong type or end parameters in this case however that is not a warning so if i were to undo that one let us now basically so basically you can get that kind of error uh, like that one uh, yeah let us just now or, or maybe create our own function somewhere else so that one can also be done on the global scope so i'll go down there i can now maybe create our my function maybe something like a uh, maybe integer example maybe you can have it as example one then we can have inside like that one then just i'm just creating a function in this case so we can have like a maybe maybe what maybe what maybe what maybe what maybe you can just return uh, return what we want to return something so we can have integer integer a and then integer b something like that one on these uh, parentheses in that case parentheses of that function so in here we may want to return maybe a plus b a plus b in that uh, case maybe if we are to compile our so it says we have some other data so we can have y and z x and y then return x and 
why something like that one i hope this one compiles fine yeah so right now we have our uh, we have declared a new function and a new function by the name example one so if we were to call it on the on init function which is now basically over over here so i'll just extend it so if you were to call it here, yeah, just type in the name example one. Then now we have to provide in the data types. So if we were to go ahead and ignore the 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 data types, the parameters of that function, and then compile it, we get wrong parameters count error. So or if we were, go, we were to go ahead and maybe put x 10 for x in this case and then compile it again you get we still get the same kind of error wrong parameters count so the reason as to why we get this error is because we have either less or more parameters that are not to the exact or the specific definition in this case so if we in this case we have x and y which means we should have two integers inside it so let us just go with 10 or maybe 10 and 5 something like that one. so if we were to compile that kind of error now is going because we have uh, the specific uh, uh, the specific parameters that for that specific function that is now in this case example one so if we were to go maybe uh, ahead and put something like add another data maybe 30 we still get the same error wrong parameters count because our function requires to have specifically two integers however we have three integers so to take care of that error we now uh, reset it to the default two integers in that case so that is now the uh, the seventh error that you may encounter so now moving on to the eighth error that you may encounter is uh, this one some operator uh, expected some operator expected error in that uh, some operator expected error in that in that manner in that sense in this case so we usually get this kind of error when we miss an, an operator in a specific location by missing it maybe you can miss it by uh, you can miss it completely or being incomplete or misplacing it so let us just uh, go to an example maybe maybe where we can have just another example which is now let me just base my examples on the on init function in this case so we can have something like int in another integer in this case we used c we have not used d so i can use it so integer d is equals to maybe 10 plus 10 we want now to add 10 to 10 in this case so we can add 10 to another 10 in this case so we want to add 10 to 10 or 10 to to 20 something like that one however now you can see we forgot to have the plus sign over there so if we were to compile this one you can see some operator is definitely expected and you can guess that operator which is in this case now the addition sign the plus sign in this case so that is not the first that you can miss it completely in this case then it can be incomplete in this case if maybe maybe i can have another function for the incompleteness of that kind of for you to get that kind of error so if if uh, we can have something like this one so if uh, if a d okay d is equals to true then you can have something like here return basically something like that one so if d is equals to true then return so you can compile it okay 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 so we get something that is uh, not expected however i just want to express the error that you may get in that case so i can have it as another integer e i mean e so i can maybe bool i can define it or declare it in that case 
must return a value. So uh, definitely want to have something like this one. Just this is should be real quick in this case. So d is equals to maybe 10. Maybe now I can compile that one. So what? Wow. <laughs> we should have something like this one. Why is it? Possible use of an initialized variable e okay so can have something like that one which will now have the code completely working so i do not know it shouldn't be working in this case it shouldn't be working if we have uh, something like that this one this is usually what i want to use here is not the assignment operator however it seems to be working fine so I'll just ignore that point and move on to the other point where we can have something like uh, this one, which is now like uh, which is now like uh, where we said it is now misplacing it. Basically, it is now misplacing the operator. In this case, which is now the operator expected error, some operator expected error that error warning that error that we get in this case so when we misplace it however i do not like this code because it is wrong however the program is still accepting it in this case so i'll just uh, do away with the that example so right now we can then move on to the next ninth kind of error that you may encounter this kind of error is the ambiguous access like this one a big was access can be one of the following can be one of basically it is usually up to something like a, can be one of then it gives you some some that kind of column some other that uh, things that you can check so ambiguous access can be one of it the this kind of error or you get this kind of error when you miss the left opening parenthesis in a function so in that case it can be something like uh, like uh, the left opening parenthesis you can have something like uh, is it this one i do not think so let me check it out. I do not think so. Basically, you when you get this kind of error, it is when you are you are dealing with too many, too many, what do I call it? Maybe our function has too many functions or other defined variables. Where, however, in this case, we do not still get that kind of error, which means we do not have we do not have enough things for it to to occur. Or maybe you can have something like here. Basically, where where this kind of error happens is when you have like uh, some something like an handle. Maybe I can just create an indicator handle over here. So integer, integer handle. Maybe can create an ma handle. Then on in it, I can just initialize that handle. So I can have it as a handle. Adult ma is equals to i ma something which is now should now be big. Then can have period current. We can have maybe ten. Another maybe zero. E m a doesn't matter. Then we can have price. Price close. Then something like that one. So let us now compile. It just compiles fine. Let us now miss the left opening uh, parentheses. In this case. It really doesn't give us the ambiguous kind of error in this case. However, but, but most of the times, that is where you get that kind of error in this case. So I'll just undo it and uh, try to check with other kind of errors. I'll just 
I'm just doing this thing live. That is why I'm trying most of the things to see if it is working. It is just simply from uh, from uh, experience. I'm doing this basically from experience. So that is not the correct one. Then from there. We do not get that kind of error at this time. However, you when dealing with it, you may get that kind of error. That is not the ambiguous, ambiguous access can be one of bra 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 the following uh, parentheses. And basically, this happens when you miss out this uh, left opening parentheses. So we can just now maybe move on to another kind of error. In this case, now can now be. the 10th error which is now which is now not all not all control parts a uh, return a value not all control parts return a value kind of error so this kind of error or you get this kind of error when you forget to return the, the actual specified variable when you declare a function in a in exception of a void function in uh, in that case so in this case uh, uh, maybe in this case we we specified an integer kind of function variable an integer function which returns an integer over here so integer example so if we were to go ahead and miss now the return kind of function we definitely get an error that not all control parts return a value it can be your own that you have already created or it can be the maybe the an, an already predefined function so in this case if you are also to go ahead i can see that on the ini, on init function we return an integer which is now init succeeded maybe it is some string somewhere which is now initialized to be that one so like this one now if we were to go ahead and comment that out then compile it we still get the same error that not all control parts return a value this is now an exception of a void void function so if you use a void function you do not have to return anything an example is this one on the init function we do not return anything as you can see it is just blank because void is just nothing null something like that one same case to the on tick function we just returns nothing so if you are go to add and comment that one out then compile you can see it compiles that and returns an error that not all control parts return a value. So if we were, go, we were to go ahead and have this one as the void function, then compile. That is not a problem then because we do not return anything. However, if we were to have something like string kind of a function, then compile. We still need to return a string kind of here. If we were also to have a double kind of function then compile we still get the same error because we need to return something so the only exception to this one what was it it was an integer type the only exception to this kind of error is the void type of function only that you do not have to return anything so i'll go ahead and uncomment our function then compile make sure that it compiles fine so from there now we can move on so moving on, we want we go to the next kind of function, kind of error in this case. Um, I now became possessed with the function. We now move next to the next kind of error in this case. So this error is a name. We may get some name expected, expected error in that case. So the reason as to why we get the name expected error is because of wrong declaration of variables in this case. So the one of the basic rules that you basically want is a is a something like a, I could just have something an integer somewhere maybe integer you want to declare maybe like what have went we not really used so i'll just undo this one let us just do this one on the on on it init function in this case so integer so we used did we really use e no so e is equals to now maybe 
10, something like that one. So is equals to 10. So if we compile this one, it is still compiles fine. But if we were to come here and write is equals to 3e, <laughs> something like that. Or what is not that now really? Then let, let us just have something like moving. Moving average. Then average. Then we want to create to mention that it is a double moving average so we come there right at the end and write two moving average crossover then you compile you get name expected error that case so two name expected error the reason is that because is because you cannot start with a with an integer type of variable or just any numerical over here you cannot start your name you are defined or uh, declared variable with a with a with an integer with a numerical in this case so if you want to have to you can take it at the end then compile it should compile fine something like that one it shouldn't start it can even be after the m m2 moving something like that one however it must not be at the front of that error that is not the 11th error that you get so the 12th error error in this case Basically, also results from that kind of uh, mistake, and this is not the invalid, the invalid suffix, the invalid suffix error. So this kind of error now emerges or uh, emanates from that kind of uh, error again. So if you were to come there and write two moving average crossover something like that one just dynamic you can see that we have this error the invalid suffix so if you want to have your two definition that that is a two moving average crossover then you have you need to have two anywhere else other than at the prefix of that thing of that uh, variable that you are declaring in this case so that is not the error number 12 we can now move on to the 13th error which i hope is now the last and most commonly popular error in this case. So this kind of error is now the, the syntax error. The syntax kind of error where you, you have something like parameter parameter missed. Syntax error parameter missed. Do we really have something else ahead? I do not completely think so. So we have this kind of error. That is not the syntax error parameter missed. So we get this kind of error when we add an extra piece of information that is completely unnecessary for to a predefined function in this case. So basically, maybe to have something like that one, we can have a, just like here already that we are and uh, defined yeah we can come here then add an extra piece of information like that one so if we are not to compile we get syntax error parameter missed because we cannot have an extra parameter in that case so so yeah something like that one now so if you just go ahead and add another semicolon over there we get parameter missed in this case which means that we cannot basically even i think we can have something like this one i hope this one can compile fine wow no it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't just when you want you have something like can we have a dot and then have syntax error no basically it is not the the comma where we you have the syntax error parameter missed kind of error in this case yeah basically like that one so i'll just uh, so basically that is not the end of the common and most popular errors there are more several errors maybe up to four 400 i think more than even 400 errors that you may encounter but these are basically mo mo the most common and popular errors that you may encounter in the in this case so right now we will just move ahead to another the other section mql5 uh, errors was it errors no in this case now it is the compilation uh, warnings in this case these warnings they are something not too critical to the 
the compiler might compile you the warning but your program may work ineffectively in this case that is what we mean by this one the compiler will just compile fine and it will run but with the warnings that it will present to you maybe some things that do not completely make sense or some confusing things on your code so the first kind of warning that you may get in here now it is the variable i can have this one in small caps variable variable may be something like uh, maybe just anything can be anything whatever you have defined not variable something not used warning that kind of uh, warning so an example of this uh, thing it is basically basically we'll get this kind of warning not on the global scope but on a specific function maybe you can just base this one again on the on init function so we can just go ahead over there and then have integer uh, moving moving average something like that one then we compile so we get this kind of warning variable moving average is completely not used in this case so you can see not used in that kind of function so if we were again to define this one on the on the what do i call it on the on the global scope which is now somewhere in here like uh, like this one i'll just just want to make this one more beautiful so we can have like integer then moving average moving average uh, global global scope something like that one so if you are to compile if it is now on the global scope there is no it, it doesn't mean anything it is just has to be on the on the function over here something like that one so i'll just comment that one out compile now you can see even if we have not used this one this uh, moving average global scope a variable that we have integer kind of data variable that we have defined on the global scope it doesn't have any kind of effect to our program so basically that is a uh, that is all that uh, th that maybe you basically want to do in that case so right from there now or maybe to another thing to take care of this function you can just instead of having it like that one let me compile to get the warning again then you can just initialize it is equals to maybe two basically having initialized it to some to some another integer that way now you have used that kind of a uh, kind of thing in that case so that is all that uh, now you need to know on that uh, kind of warning so let us now move on to the next kind of warning which is now on the second one it is not the implicit conversion implicit conversion from can be anything in this case i'll just have a space to another kind of anything else can be from string to integer integer to string something like that one so this error or uh, this warning in this case now occurs when you declare a variable of a certain data type and initialize it or express it in uh, as a variable of another data type in this case maybe it can be from string to integer integer to string something yeah something anything like that one so i'll just go ahead and uh, just have this one somewhere near each other to save space then from there we can now initialize something 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 just need anything so i can have something like uh, integer integer did we use e no not again e is equals to maybe 10 so integer e is equals to 10 so that is not the correct uh, definition of this integer so 10 is an integer in this case however we can write this it as a as a string in that kind of brackets so if we were to compile this one you can see explicit conversion from string to integer that is why 10 is now we have expressed this kind of 10 10 integer as a as a string in this case so we get this kind of warning 
in that manner. It doesn't mean that the program will not compile. No, it compiles fine without an error. That is not an error now. However, it may mean something more different on the program. So to take care of uh, this kind of error, we usually use the typecasting. That is now you can have Basically, the computer tries to run this program or understand this program from the right side to the left side. By this, I mean from this side to this side. So, first, it gets the string name, then assigns that string name to the integer E in this case. So, to do that, you just want to uh, maybe say that this one is now not a string, it is an integer. That is now basically what we call typecasting. So, when you do the typecasting, it has to be inside the brackets. So, you have something, you need to have something in brackets like that one. So right now, we want to change it to the number from string. In this case, 10 is now the string. So we want to change it to the number. So we have the integer here, just something like that one. So we can now compile it. It should compile fine. So the other mistake that you may find yourself in is leaving this one uh, without the brackets. You cannot have like uh, have it like, uh, like that one. It, uh, that is now an integer. No, it just need to be in uh, in parentheses, in brackets or in parentheses, something like that one, which is now basically what we call, maybe I can have it here as a type casting, something like that one. Another thing that you may use, however it is not commonly used and I am not very sure if it will work on this one, is uh, using the string the that kind of conversion so instead of having this let me just okay i will have as uh, ef over there so something like that one however you saw another error that a variable is already defined that could now be our our other error let me just go back and we can include this one on our errors over there variable already defined you can have this one as now the 14th error which is now variable already defined that kind of uh, error so we can now change our error back to the corrected one so in this case we can have something like a string to integer string to integer kind of uh, however now we will get another another kind of error <laughs> because the string to integer function is a function to convert strings to long type functions so i think this one will only work on the let me let me just check this one out to see possible loss of data due to yeah from long integer to int integer so basically here yeah, for you to do that you just have to have the correct type which is now the long type just like that one to take care of that kind of error completely the other kind of error maybe i can have something else like uh, like uh, i can just undo this one I can just delete this one so now you can see implicit conversion from string to number so our number is now the long type number f which will now if I were to undo the string to integer, then it takes care of that error. So you can either use the typecasting or you can use this kind of format. So basically that also applies to something like, uh, you can have something like string. You want now to convert that kind of uh, string. Maybe you want to have string. Uh, string. String 1 is equals to, uh, string 1 is equals to maybe 10. That is not actually is not a string basically a string is a number so 10 is not a number but it is something else in this case so you want to convert it you you can see you still get the same warning implicit conversion from number to string so in this case we want to change this number to a string so we can have something like typecasting again which is now string so we now force it to be a string which takes care of that error or we can have it as a uh, 10 is an integer so integer to integer to string 
variable something like that one then from there you can have it in those uh, brackets now the data so you can see that now should not take care of that error also in this case so basically that is uh, all that you need to know about that uh, warning oh, and this warning and uh, it is very common when you are programming so we can now move on to the next warning which is now truncation of truncation uh, truncation of a constant value is it value value or data i'm not very sure but i hope so that it is value so we have truncation of value warning in this case so the truncation of value warnings occurs again basically on on something like uh, the same kind of error that we got already in that kind of uh, thing of uh, this kind of errors so the first thing or uh, can i maybe in general just maybe in general it is uh, this error just occurs by the wrong use of data variables maybe you want to define an integer and then instead of initializing this initializing maybe what kind of integer ef can now have g is equals to 10 10 is actually an integer but in case of having 10 you have 10 point maybe 4 5 just an another random number so if you are to compile this one that is now a double 10 point something ahead is not an integer it is a double so which means the the program will just take the first uh, all numbers in this case which is now 10 and truncate the others no matter what the numbers are it will just route them off to the nearest all number in this case so in this case we'll have uh, an input of 10 so you can see this is not an error however it is a warning that you will not get the all number 10.45976 as you wanted it to be stored in this variable g it will the the outcome that you will have it is now 10 only it will just be routed off to the nearest whole number in this case which is now 10 the whole of 10 so will not get the rest of the part which will now be truncated so that is now another common error that you may get another instance that you may get this one is that uh, you can initialize the, the, this one to integer g then you can just maybe even take care of that error then have it as as g like that one however we know that an integers store the numbers up to a certain number of uh, bytes i do not know how many bytes i cannot really remember but it cannot take as much as maybe can it take more than ten thousand? i i'm not sure let me just compile and see yeah it takes a million it takes that one also However, it cannot take that kind of number now. That number is too big for it for it to be stored into G. So it will take up to a certain amount of uh, amount of digits. I cannot really recall it. It's two power. I do not you know two power either six, sixteen or thirty six somewhere in between there. The the type of data it can this one can store so you can see we still get that truncation of value because it cannot this store this kind of number this number is too big for it to be stored on an integer data variable so maybe to take care of this one you may want now to take it to another larger larger data variable that can store that old value i think long can store yeah long stores large numbers in this case so you can see it has it basically it has a bigger uh, it is allocated a, a bigger size in this case a bigger byte size in this case so that is what you can do at that kind of instance so right now you can move on to the next kind of warning that you get which is now warning number four which can also which cannot be the possible which you have already seen possible loss uh, of data due to type conversion is it type conversion due to co oh, no due to conversion type so I'll just cut and i will paste it right there due to type conversion what am i doing due to conversion type from yeah i think that is now from something which i will initialize it then to another 
blank thing which can also be anything as we are going to see soon so uh, we usually get this kind of warning when you try to typecast the information or or use uh, or interchange data variables basically in this case so maybe you can have something like uh, like uh, like uh, like what like what maybe i can just go back here again and have something like integer integer e f g h is equals to is equals to maybe 10.10 10, 10. be something like that one is, it, is that the right one? No, we get truncation of constant variable in this case. So what can I have over here? I'm just trying to think. I'm just trying to, to think, to think, to think. Maybe you, you realized that uh, this, you realized this kind of error that you are truncating. Then you want to typecast it to maybe uh, a double, double or integer. Let me just check this one out. Okay, that is now typecasted to integer. Uh -huh, wow. Oh, no, 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 no. It is now the interchanging of data. No, so now the opposite. Instead of having an integer, you want to interchange the variables to... We still get the same warning. The same warning. Wow. Maybe I can now take care of that one also. We can now just come over our own init function. We can just typecast this one from an integer to maybe a double. Yeah, there we go. Possible loss of data due to type conversion from a double. Uh, I said I'm just doing this one, this uh, thing live. Uh, yeah, basically. Because uh, from I'm doing this one from experience. So we have something like this one. As you can see over here, our handle, our moving average handle is of integer type uh, variable. However, we want now to change the double. We want to, ch to change the information that we get here from an integer to a double. Now we are typecasting it. Now we typecast it the wrong, the wrong way. So we get an error that there is possible loss of data to, due to type conversion from double to integer, something uh, like that one. I hope that we get the same error. I, I was hoping that we could get the same error again by using the wrong, wrong type casting over here. However, it seems not so. We just get the same error again. So you can see that is why now we can an example and there are very many other examples just that i am using the current examples that we already have in this case so we can now move on to the next kind of error that you may get which is now the empty controlled uh, statement something is it empty controlled statement or i am not sure if that is now the correct uh, wording however we will now see We're, we are now going to see uh, soon so we have something like int h i so i can have integer i can have integer j as well as integer k so i can still initialize the integers to maybe one Can initialize this one to two then you can initialize this one as well to three just a random number then we can have a statement here a statement there like a, like a, like a, like what so if a is equals to one and that is not the end of your statement yeah if this happens then what so what yeah, if this happens, so what? It is just basically a, a statement or a, an expression that does not make any sense. Just something like this one. So if we were to compile this one, what do we really expect? Yeah, it, it is not an error, but what what is now the essence of that? Uh, what is now the essence of that uh, expression in this case? So that is what? Actually, it is empty controlled statement found. So yeah, empty 
can just update this one to empty controlled statement formed. It is just something that does not make sense, where it is a, it is just results from having a conditional statement that has no effect in this case. Yeah, wow. And that made me remember that we can have that uh, something else that does not have an effect. So we can have if A is equals to A and B is equals to 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 two, then fail to input that one. We now get the same error again. So it doesn't really make sense. However, there is an, another kind of error which results from this one. However, if you know this, the empty control statement found, you can also take care of that error too in that case. So we can now, okay, I will just have that one as that one. We, we will now move on to the next kind of error. I hope this one is now the final error. So we can have 4, 5, 6, which is now the check. A operator precedence check operator precedence for is it possible error I think so for possible error something like that one check operator precedence for possible error then after there we usually have what to to do in this case maybe use let me just I'll just come to update that one whenever I have the old it is just a, it is just a long error so we can just come over here again and say that if one is equals to if a no in this case that was wrong I want to use the the variables that we have there if one if i is equals to one and two no and j is equals to two or or k is equals to 3, then what do you need me to do? Actually, if you look at that statement, we can have two cases over here, which is now we can have if i is equals to 1 and j is equals to 2, we can have that kind of, uh, totally it is not an error. So let me just compile this on and see what I, yeah, check operator precedence for possible error so use parenthesis to clarify precedence so i can just come over here and update our our fifth one to use use a use para use parenthesis for to clarify precedence something yeah i think that is now the all one to clarify precedence so you can see in this case this is just a foolish statement that we have here just a foolish statement so you can have something you can take care of this one either by making it make sense just it is the only way not even either so you can have something like that one which is now also true we can just instead of having this empty controlled statement we can have something like return to take care of that one that statement first wow so i can have something like a like a just a is equals to three to take to just take care of that error that we have over there why do we get this kind of warnings why do we get this kind of warning let me just undo So you can take care of that error by having something like putting them the in in just using the parentheses uh, to clarify the precedence. So you can see you can either have that one, which now takes care of that warning, or we can have something else. We can just else as or as well group them in this. Uh, in that manner so you can see also we take care of that warning again so basically that is now what the the error you get uh, means in the in this possible so so yeah i think now that is now most of the commonly 
used errors that you get to to most of the errors that you get in this case so you can have like i is equals to one so that now takes care of uh, of that error of the of the warnings in this case so that is now basically the most common and popular errors and warnings that you may encounter so that is all so i hope you grasped something so and by the way if there are other errors that we did not common and popular errors that we did not uh, include in this uh, in this uh, video you can just uh, go ahead and place a comment on the comment section and i will just get back and update the errors some other time so that is all bye bye for you uh, for being with me up to this time and uh, the end of this lesson so that is all bye bye have nice trading activity ahead